So we have your your what scan? My CT. Um, I'll show you where it is. Ginger told me that the shipping company sent you the wrong one. That you got the cat scanner instead of the bird scanner. <laughs> So this is uh, my CT. This is a, a rabbit's leg, actually, that had a <clears throat> talus dislocation. We just did surgery on that. So we've been able to diagnose some things with this that from uh, conventional radiography would fall well short of doing. Mm -hmm. You get essentially 720 images on a CT. and. Um, even one pass gives you 720 images, and even our X-rays, they're they're basically two of these, just held at lateral and transverse levels. So, you know, the amount of detail that you can get. Is there any reason to still do X-ray when you've got this? Um, well, cost really is the biggest thing. Um, so, if people don't want to spend isn't, what it takes to do a CT versus well, isn't the bulk of the either job the anesthetic and just the getting the bird prepared rather than the actual scanning? Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, to, to take the x-ray, we still have to anesthetize them. Um, but uh, anyway, they, for the amount of work uh, and the same, uh, uh, same amount of time, you know, you get a lot more diagnostic capabilities mm -hmm, associated mm -hmm. with doing the CT. It's real so, cool. Yeah, I'll show you the CT itself. So this is our CT. And if you want to look through that, um, this is called the gantry. This is our uh, ventilator. It's hooked up to oxygen, and we have a non rebreathing system here. And then we have three different areas to view the animal, so we don't actually have to be inside doing or getting the radiation. So CT is radiation just like an x-ray is. Is there reproductive um, damage from that uh, for females? You know... Um, if it's a breeder bird? If if they were having high doses and we were doing it frequently, I could see that there could be a problem. But anytime you're passing radiation, From a one time, it's not... I would think the risk is incredibly low. Not zero, but incredibly low. So, anyway. We've, we have a ton of images on there that actually have given us keen insight mm -hmm. to, um, you know, how to approach the problems, both medically and surgically. Oh, so, fantastic. I'm going to lay this on the table here. Tim, do you want help with that CT? We're doing those wire nail trims this morning, guys. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. Can you stand on there for a second? to see where he's at here. So as he was discussing with you, we don't lose them because we pay attention. So we have him on a low level of anesthesia right now until we're ready to take our CT. And then we will give him additional breaths with additional anesthesia right before we capture the CT. We are set up for positioning, which is called a fluoroscopy. You guys can do full head to yeah. That's the plan. Okay. Okay. So I don't know if I told you this. There's only we're the first vet to have the exclusive exotic vet to have their own CT. There was only one other vet that has one now, and they're just starting to use it. And uh, again, it's been very educational for us. So you can see that there's a time delay. You hear it in there on the ventilator. 
and then you'll see the see it pop up. The other thing, what we're doing now is fluoroscopy, and fluoroscopy is for positioning. And then after we uh, position, that's when we'll run the uh, rotor. Are you ready to rock and roll, or did you reposition? Okay, CT is capturing. And so what you'll do is you'll look at all these lovely reference ranges and you're going to plug them in. Okay, does that make sense? And then it, just know that there's like several pages. Run it one more time. Good. Get that yeah. stethoscope on them. So, but if it's bad, it wasn't the last time. If it's bad. Dr. Triggers is the world's first uh, CT scan of a Cape Parrot. It's the first one that we've done here. Not the first poicephalid, but definitely yeah. the first Cape. Do we need him down for anything else? Nope, nope. Okay. We can go ahead and start untaping it. And... He was on oxygen in there already. Does that make sense? Okay. Because the thing is, is if you're seeing a drift in the back, if you put them on room air, getting, and your white blood cells and your platelets, it has CO2 cells, in it. If you give them straight oxygen, go ahead they wake up and, slower, or, or they stop breathing, uh, or they don't start breathing as quickly. Are you filling them up with uh, with that? Yeah, mm -hmm. blowing them up like a balloon. Mm -hmm. Does their sacs fill up? Yeah. Um, so we're going to look at three views, uh, and we're starting really at the head. If you look at this little red line, it's going to tell you where we're at in the body, and then this is the transverse that we're actually looking at. So, um, so we're in the crop area now. These are this is the cervical vertebrae. We're getting ready to open up into the. Uh, these are the shoulders here, shoulder joints. Um, we're opening up into starting in the lungs right here. You can see that these are pneumatic bones. You see the air going through the humerus. This is the beginning of the lung here. And you can start to see little white, fuzzy white fuzz areas. When you see these things, these are the ribs and back, these little white structures. And then these are the pulmonary arteries or vein as we go through that. This is the pulmonary uh, artery or vein as it goes into the lung. So all those little white what look like traveling roads are vessels that are heading into the pulmonary system. What we're actually doing is assessing as we're doing that any opacities, any size changes, any asymmetries on either side. Now we're well into uh, the uh, heart and liver at that junction. The, um, this is all air sac and it's all clean looking air sac. So we're heading into the liver area here. Um, we're into the, so this is the left side, this is going to be the ventriculus. And amazingly enough, I don't see any grit or anything like that in his ventriculus. Nice clear glottis, no problems. How does his breast muscle look? Really good. So that's, if you're scoring that keel, you'd say he's an ideal body weight. It's not flat, it's not rounded, it doesn't, uh, the margin of the muscle doesn't stick way above the keel. So his weight is perfect. This is the side view? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're going to cut through him both ways. If you look here, that shows you where we're going. We're going to go right first. And this is nice. You can see the lungs and the vessels and all that stuff there really well.
So he has an interesting keel, and that's why it sort of looked weird on here first. You see his keel, and you would never know this just from physical exam, but his backbone is straight. It's at least good with his keel there, but do you see how his keel takes a little bit of a weird shape? It's kind of an S shape. Yeah. Can you tell a calcium deficiency from these type of images? Sometimes you can, yeah. If they're really deficient, then no matter how well you adjust it, it'll still look osteopenic. Mm -hmm. So I don't see any evidence of that.